So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the modify panel. That's, as you can see, that was what came out in our notification. Um, so I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of designing in this webinar. We do have other webinars that I will be holding where I kind of show you how to combine a bunch of features to make some cool designs. Um, whenever classes come out, we will have designs in there. But basically what I like to do right now is I'm doing smaller free webinars to kind of go over features or small things in the software to get you familiar with it a little bit at a time. Because I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, uh, if I were was given a whole bunch of information at one time, it is not helpful to me. It's actually really confusing and I get overwhelmed. So I try to give you guys little bits and pieces of this to give you tips and tricks to kind of get you familiarized with whatever we're working with. Okay, so let me ask you guys one more question um, and then we're going to kind of get going with the modify panel. Um, how many webinars have you guys been to? So let me know, is this your first webinar? You've been to a couple? Um, I don't think Tasha's in here today, but uh, Tasha has been to every webinar that I've done, which is basically three years worth of webinars. So we have a lot of people. And that's great. There's a lot of first people here. That makes me so happy. Um, you guys know, well, if you're the first one, you don't know. But a lot of you guys know that um, teaching you guys is my favorite part of my job. You know, I love uh, making things. I love doing my YouTube videos. But what I really love is being able to show you guys something and to teach you guys something. Um, I enjoy it. So webinars are one of my favorite parts of my job. So I'm really glad that you guys are here. Um, don't forget ask as many questions as you want. I love seeing your questions. I love seeing your comments. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll get started. Um, so what we're doing today is we're doing the modified panel. So this is in your Silhouette Studio. So right here you'll see that I am working with it. So I have Business Edition. Now what I cover in here will apply whichever version you have. Now, one little thing, if you guys went to my Business Edition webinar last week, I did explain some of the features of Business Edition, you know, what they're useful for. That is on our YouTube channel, so you can check it out. Um, I recommend, if you can, get Business Edition. There's a lot of cool stuff in it, um, and it opens up every feature they have. So let's go over here, and we are going to go to the Modify panel. So our modify panel is going to be on the right side of our screen and depending on how big your screen is and how large you set your buttons in your preference panel um, kind of di dictates where it is on your computer. So for me, my computer screen is fairly large, but I also make my buttons fairly large as well so that you guys can see it. So if we go over here, my modify panel it's, is towards the middle of my right panel over here. So my mouse is going over here to the right. Depending on what you're working with, it may be towards the middle of the screen, it may be towards the bottom. What you're looking for is you're looking for this symbol, the rectangle with the circle on top. So let's open up the modify panel and we have this right here. So we can see I'm going to bring this to the center of my screen to kind of show you. There's a bunch of different features, well not features, commands in here. Now, um, these are what you're going to use a lot when designing. So when you're working with Silhouette Studio, some of the things, besides like the text tool, the two features that I use all the time, if you guys have attended any of my other webinars, I use the offset panel and I use the modify panel all the time. It's kind of what I build everything off of. Now, the reason why the modify panel is important to know is that you know you have over on the left side of your screen you have your you know drawing panels this is where you do your shapes where you bring your text in all of those different things but over here on the modify panel is how you alter them to make them into really great designs or really even make them cuttable designs and i'm going to show you that what i mean by that in just a second so the modify panel is going to be your best friend it's going to be what you're going to use the most if you're doing your own designing okay so let's go over here, and I am going to go over, and I'm going to type something first. So I have my text panel over here, and let's just go ahead and do, I'll just type my name, Lisa Potts. And let me highlight this, and I'm just going to choose a script font for this. So let's go over here, and I'm going to choose, I have right here this script font right here. So the majority of you know this, but 
there is an issue with this bot if I want to cut it out right now. Um, who can tell me like what the problem is right now? Like why can't I just type something in script and then cut? Like you know what is what's the issue that's going on? Guys, look how cute this cup is, by the way. I love it. That's right. We have overlapping letters. So the reason this is happening is Silhouette Studio recognizes when you have text or you have objects. So objects are lines. That's like your circle, your square, anything that may, you know, need to be, that's been converted over. So right here, because Silhouette Studio knows this is text, it, you can retype it, you can change the font, you can do whatever. So like, I can double click, here's my green, here's text edit mode. I can go over, go to my text panel over here, change the font if I want to. So this is an editable text. Now because this is an editable text, it is counting each letter as an individual object. It's not counting them as something that flows together. And so where that becomes a problem is that this font is set up so your letters overlap, sure, but the problem is, is they're still individual. So if we were to cut it right now, so it's like, hey, all these letters work together, they're just overlapping. So that's what the first feature of the Modify panel comes into play for. And this is probably what you're going to use Modify the most is Weld. So we'll right here, let's go to Weld. So now you can see everywhere that there is an overlapping line is, is gone. They're combined into one. They've welded those two objects into each other. Now one thing to keep in mind, this is a side note when it comes to script fonts, is that it doesn't combine everything into one big object. All right. So if you look at my screen, you can see that each section has a box around it. You see that? So what this means at the, is that these are individual items. If I click off and move this, you can see I have my aughts moved. So this is one other thing that I'm going to show you before we kind of go more into the modify panel. Is just uh, two important concepts that you should know when you're doing designing in Silhouette Studio. So um, when we have separate objects like this, we need them to move to resize together. We need them to be treated together. So we have two options that we can do. We have uh, grouping and we have making compound path. So be totally honest. Do you love those concepts or do they confuse you? Like, let me know. Do you understand it or you're like, nope, I just I just hope I click the right one. <laughs> so we have, we have some people and you know what? It's honestly like, it's honestly, can be challenging. I've had to get it, I've had to explain it a couple different times. I had to have it explained to me a couple different times before I got it. And I'll be totally honest, like there are individuals here or used to be here that it took, I don't know, probably a couple months for them to figure it out. So you know what? Even if the professionals, you know, even the professionals don't get it. So please don't feel uh, bad about that, okay? So I'm gonna quickly explain it and explain to you why I'm going to be doing the feature that I'm doing now. So you can see we have our individual object, objects here. Now, both grouping and compound path are going to let your objects be moved together, resized together, all of that. Now the difference is when you tell it how many actual objects are in there, okay? So for an example, like me and my husband, Nick, like we are married, so we are grouped together, but like we are not one gelled in person. I am still my own individual person that is part of a group, okay? Now with compound path, and so that's the case with this. If we were to group this all together, we can group it. So now we can move it all together. However, these are still and these are still individual objects. They're just grouped together. So let's ungroup. Now, um, one thing that you want to do ungroup for is if you want these to be individual, for example, different colors. So if I wanted this to be, you know, blue, this to be green, this to be yellow. Oops, I did line color. Sorry. Let me turn that back to red. 
this to be yellow, this to be orange, and red. I decided after I did blue that I was going to do rainbow. I was hoping, I was going to see if anyone caught that. So right here, these are all separate and they're different colors. So if I grab all of these here and I right click and group it, those individual boxes go away, but these can be moved together and they can be resized together. All right, but they're still separate. You can change the colors, you can do whatever. So this would be something as if you have um, an object that has multiple colors and I'll show you for the example at the end. So let's go ahead and ungroup this. Now compound paths basically say, hey, take all the lines in here and combine them into one big object. So technically we have all these lines here and they're separate. So um, one example of a compound path is if you look at like the O, there's a line on the inside. That outside line and that inside line work together but it's still one object. Now when you make it a compound path, it combines it all into one object. So that's going to help as well because Silhouette's very picky about how many objects are in its workspace. So if you combine things, no matter how big it is, it's still one object so it helps you with your designing. So if we right click and make this a compound path, you can see all of it goes to one color. You can't have individual colors in one object. You have one object, one color. And if I double click on it to get into point edit mode, you'll see that this whole thing shows up in my point edit. So right here, basically a compound path, it's saying, hey, all of these lines work together into one big object. So then we can just keep it that way. Okay, so um, that's kind of a quick difference. Of course, feel free to ask questions if it still confuses you. Honestly, compound path and grouping just takes a lot of practice. And then one day, like for me, one day it just like clicked and I got it. Okay. So you guys ready to see some more of the modify panel? You guys still are you guys still good? You guys still getting it? Cool. Awesome. Look at that thumbs up someone sent me. All right, so now what I'm going to do to explain the different features is I'm going to draw two shapes in here. And um oops, let me fix that. And I'm going to kind of show you how the two shapes relate to each other when working in the modify panel. So let me go over here. I'm going to actually delete this one. Let me draw my rectangle. I'm going to hold down shift. Shift helps me make a perfect square. And then let's hover over this. Sorry, my computer is a little buggy. Um, if my screen acts weird, I do know my computer is a little bit buggy right now. I'm actually getting it replaced next week. I'm so excited. I'm getting a faster computer. So if it does get a little laggy, I'll explain as it's going on what's happening. So let's go over here and I'm going to fill in my shapes. Okay. So I have my square and my circle. Okay. So let me hold down. I have both of these selected. I'm holding down the alt button, clicking and dragging. And so I just made a duplicate. So that's my favorite way to make a copy of something. I just hold down the alt button, click and drag, and it makes a copy of it for me. Okay. Little side note, that's my favorite shortcut. All right, so now we have our two shapes right here, okay? So I'm always going to keep this one here on the left so you can see to compare it. So we have our two shapes here, so we know that we have a circle right on top of each other. Um, and then we can go highlight that. And if I take out the fill real quick, let me take out the fill, you can see I have overlapping lines. Um, how do you do that with a Mac? Jennifer, I think a Mac does have the Alt button, right? I'll have to look it up. So let me go right here. So we have these two. Let's go over to weld. So now you can see both of my shapes have been combined into one and those overlapping lines are gone. So when you want to kind of find a way to remember which one means what, welding means getting rid of overlapping lines. Like that's what it's going to be. So let me, I'm just doing control Z to go back. And so now we have subtract. So if you go into the modify panel, there are two options, okay? There's subtract and there's subtract all. And sometimes when you're starting off, it's hard to remember which one means what, okay? Now, my biggest piece of advice that I can give for this is to remember to look at the little icons, okay? So the icons are actually super helpful and they're actually pretty indicative of what these buttons do. 
So if we go right here to subtract, you'll see that I have my back shape and then the top one's a dotted line. And if you hover over, it actually explains it to you. So subtract uses the frontmost shape to cut a hole in the backmost shape. The backmost shape can be either a single shape or a group, okay? So that's going to be really helpful for my example at the end. But always remember that subtract is going to come from the very backmost shape. So what that means is like, let me make my copy here. If I have a circle here, and then I make another one here, and then I put something on top of this. Now, silhouette remembers the order that you make things, okay? So let's say I have this rectangle on top. Let me fill it in so you can see it. Um, if I have this rectangle on top, then this, it remembers the order it got made in. So this circle is actually my backmost shape. So if I highlight my design, I have all these here, and do subtract. Actually, let me show you the first one, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's highlight this one and I'll go over to subtract. So check it out. Basically, subtract uses your top shape like a cookie cutter. So it's gonna cut out from the back one what the top one is. So we have that set right there. This is great. I use subtract a lot when I wanna make cute little edges. Um, yesterday in my Facebook Live, I had this design. So right here, I took a rectangle and I subtracted circles from the corners because I wanted it to have that little ticket look. So subtract is really useful for something like that. Now, when I go by the backmost shape, remember the order that these shapes came in. This circle was made first. So if I highlight both all of these and go right here to subtract, check it out. So it cut it from the first circle. So the second one disappeared completely, and then the first circle was subtracted from what was on top of it. Barb, that's a good question. I'm going to come back to that because that's actually my example at the end. So we can see that over there. So do you guys get what I'm saying? Does that make sense when, it ha when I'm talking about subtract and the backmost shape? So I, I just want to make sure you understand that just because when you're doing designing, sometimes you may forget to group your shapes that you're subtracting from. And it can be super frustrating when half your shapes disappear. So just remember, you can subtract from a bunch of shapes in the back. So if you want to do a pattern, if you want to do text, subtracting is no big deal. You just have to make sure they're either grouped or made a compound path so that you don't subtract from the very first thing that was made. Okay? So we have this all set. I'm going to delete this example because we can go on to the next one. So right here, I'm going to have both of these selected. So remember, when you're working with a modify panel, the, the way the modify panel works is that you use one shape to modify another. So your options will not show up if you don't have two or more shapes selected. So if I unclick, you can see I can't really do anything. Like if I click on one, I can't do anything. So just go over here and make sure you have two selected. So right here, we have subtract all. Now, the difference between subtract and subtract all is that the bottom shape is treated the exact same. Whatever the bottom shape, you're going to cut out from the bottom shape what's on top. Now the difference is that subtract all keeps every shape there. It just gets rid of those overlapping areas. So if I click on subtract all, wow, it looks like nothing happened. But we can click and you can see that that's taken out there. So let me just make sure. All right. The hardest part with subtract all is just figuring out if my control Z went back far enough. So we have our subtract all. So now we are going to go over to our intersect tool. So the intersect tool is only going to be, um, you should be able to see my, can you guys see my screen? Jerry, are you watching on an iPad? You might need to just slide the thing. It might be giving you an issue. Oh, phone. Turn your phone, Jerry. I think if you watch on the phone, if you do it this way, it only shows like me, which I mean, I did put on makeup today, but you should be able to turn your phone and that should fix the issue, Jerry. All right. So let me go back to the webinar. So intersect. Intersect will keep only the area where things are overlapping. So right here, I'm going to flip this and go over to intersect. So check that out, that tiny little area where these were overlapping is what stays. So you guys get that? Do you need me to repeat that? That one's pretty easy. Um, the other comments, I can only see, you won't see them. 
I see them. I don't know how to make them for everyone to see it. Sorry, guys. And then right here, we're going to go over to divide. So let's go right here. Let's click on divide. So what this does is it finds every line that is in my design. So let me go over here, and I'm going to take out my fill to show you. So it finds every line that's in here, and it divides it up into separate shapes. So let me highlight this and do it and show you what I mean. So right here, divide. We can see now that these are three shapes, and they kind of have made new shapes where the lines are. So divide, you don't typically use too much. I use it a lot for um, when I want to cut out a shape from a pattern. Um, and I, I actually am, have a webinar that I'm going to do that. So that's a cool thing that with that, and let me go ahead and just delete this one and make a copy over here. So crop is um, basically, the way they explain it is select three or more shapes and remove all areas which are not shared by at least two shapes. So crop, I'm going to show you a different example because I think it works better with that. So let's say you want to take this circle and make it into a striped circle. So I'm going to go ahead, do my alt, kind of make a bunch of copies. All right, so now I'm going to go over and edit, oops, and edit these so they are lined up. So let's go ahead and highlight all of these. Let's go to my, my transform panel. It's over here on the right. It's two buttons above the modify panel. I'm going to align them so that they're horizontally lined up. And now I'm going to re-space them. So spacing basically will take the first object and the last object that you have selected and redistribute everything in between evenly. So if we do vertical, now you can see I have my little stripes, and let me fill that in. Okay, so I have these all set, and I'm just going to right-click and group them. So let me go over here, and let's draw a circle. Hold down Shift, perfect circle. Okay, so I have my circle here, and I'm going to fill it in so you can tell that it's on top. Okay, so I have my circle here. So basically what crop does is it's basic, It's going to take all those shapes and crop them down to only fill this size here. So basically I'm taking this circle on top and cropping the bottom by that. So let's go over here. Let's go back to our modify panel and let's do crop. So check that out. So basically only the parts of the lines that were underneath the circle remain. Do you guys get it? So pretty easy, not too bad. Cool. So basically, this is kind of what you're going to use a lot. So I'm going to give you two examples of like practical ways that the modify panel can be used in action. And then um, feel free to keep asking questions. So let me go over here and let's say I want, um, let me see if I have something in my library. Let me open up my library. Oh, looks like I don't have anything in there. Um, detached lines. Well, so it's, someone said, can you explain detached lines? I honestly don't really know why that's an option. Um, basically, whenever we have lines in here, we have this all set. Um, and we have this red line right here. Detach lines basically takes off the line. So if we go right here to detach lines, you can see now I have this inside fill. And then I have my line here. So I can take that and fill it back in if I want to. And then this one, we have that. I'm not really sure because honestly, with this, if I didn't want a line around my object, I would just go right here to my line color in the top right corner and just do this little crosshatch pattern and take it off. So unless there's a hidden meaning to detach lines that I don't know, um, I don't particularly think it's useful. So let me go through here. And so for the for the example, I'm going to kind of, it was a good question. I'm just going to go ahead that. Can you show us how you made the ticket using the modified panel? So yes, let's start off with this rectangle and we're going to draw a circle. So I'm going to hold down shift and do a perfect circle. Okay. So let's go right here and I'm going to fill this in another color so I can see it better. Okay. Actually, I don't want to do black. Let's go over here and do gray. 
So we want to make our circle big enough so that it does the ticket look in here. So let's go over here and kind of expand it a little bit more. And so now what I'm going to do is position it in the corners of my, of my rectangle. So actually, let's go over here and turn off our fill color. We'll do this crosshatch. And what I'm looking for is I'm going to click on my circle. And you guys see this right here, this little um, cross... Uh, crosshairs. Um, this is the center of rotation for our shape. So this is the center of the design. Um, if you don't see this in your workspace, you may need to just turn it on in your settings. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up the corner, the, the center of my design onto the corner of my rectangle. So you can see I have this set up right here. And then I'm going to go over and just make a copy and repeat the same process throughout the entire design. Okay, so we're going to set that up there. Set that up there. Set that up there. So um, someone said never thought to use that as the exact center. Yes, by default it is the exact center. However, if you're like me and make mistakes, let me make, move this over here. Sometimes I try to move my shape and I end up moving this then that is not technically the center of your design, but that is the center of rotation. So if I were to use my green dot here and rotate it, then that is the axis that it's being rotated on, okay? So just be careful that you don't move it because then no, it's not the center of your design. And missed how you put the center of the circle. Um, by default, it should show up when you click on it. If you don't see it, you want to go over to your settings, and then I think it's under uh, defaults, so settings, it's at the bottom, it's a little gear. Go to defaults, and then right here towards uh, more than halfway down, so two-thirds of the way down, it has center of rotation. You just want to turn that on. So let's go over here. So I have my center of rotation here. So I want to, as a group, take these circles and subtract it from the square. So I'm going to click on my circle, hold down shift, and I'm going to click on all my circles. So by holding down shift, it's allowing me to select multiple things at once. So I have all these set, and so I'm going to right-click and make compound path. So now I have, basically, I have two objects in my workspace right now. I have my circles and I have my square, so they're all together. So now I can select this whole thing, and I'm going to go over to modify, and we're going to subtract it. So boom, that's how you make the ticket. So super easy. Um, let me go back, and I'm going to do control Z until these are separate. So these are separate. If I were to get all these now and do subtract, it works a lot of times. So this one works because it takes everything and subtracted it from the bottom one. But if we wanted something like uh, on the bottom, like if we had two shapes on the bottom subtract it, it wouldn't work. So sometimes it works. Now, whenever you're doing subtract, I always try to group things or make them a compound path to make it easier. Miss how you got the center of the circle. That is under settings. So just go uh, your settings gear. Second tab, defaults, and it's right here, center of rotation. So let me take that off. Okay, so I have one more example for you. So how many of you know how to do a knockout design? Have you guys seen them before? How many of you haven't tried a knockout design because they're, they're too scary? They're too complicated. They're too hard. I love doing knockout designs. Now, one thing to note, just keep in mind, I'm going to do a basic knockout design in this webinar, okay? You should keep an eye out for when our classes get launched because I wrote a class for a new platform that will come out soon uh, on knockout designs. So I will do this knockout design I'm about to do in the class but then I also do a whole bunch of different versions. So knockout designs with spacing, with rhinestones, um, enhanced knockouts so you have part of the design going out. Um, a lot of cool things. So that's actually the first class I did for the platform. So if you like how these knockout designs work, keep an eye out for the class because the class is going to be pretty dang cool. So we go over here. Let me just make sure somehow I didn't have something in my library and I missed it. I had to do a manual uninstall today, so um, 
some of my stuff is not here anymore. So check this out. I already have a base for it set in here. So let's open this. So the way a knockout design works is that we have t uh, a back object. Typically, it's text. And you want a shape to show up in it. So you can see I have my stay gold in here, and I have my dog. So one concept with your knockout designs that I want to kind of show you real quick before we move on is that when you're doing your text, you want to make sure you do a thick, blocky text, okay? Um, that's because your shape shows up in the text. So you want to have a lot of area for that. So right here, I have my text set up. Let me type it for you. So I'll do stay, all caps, and I'm going to do this in impact font. So let's go right here. Let's do impact. So stay. Let's do our alt. And then we'll type golden. So we have our stay golden. And so when you're setting up your knockout design, you want to have your text the same width. So it doesn't matter that your text isn't the same point size. You're just wanting it to be the same width to make it an easy design. So let me go over here and I'm going to kind of do this one quickly because what I'm trying to show you is why you group it. So let's say we have our text right here and we're ready to do our knockout design. Okay, so we have this all set here and let me make a copy of my little dog. And let's do our stay golden, kind of set this guy up. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple things to do in a knockout design next, but let me just show you this real quick. So part of the knockout design is we're going to do a subtract. So right here, we have our text separate. So if we were to do our subtract for part of it, check it out. My bottom text, it only kept stay because that was made first. So when you do something like that, always make sure you take your text, group it together, right click, group. So now if we go over and do subtract, it subtracts it from the bottom group, not just the bottom object. See that? Okay, so that was my little PSA on why you should group things. So let's go over here, I'm going to bring this over, and we're going to actually do our knockout design. So at the end of the day, once this knockout design is done, we want only the letters, we want the little dog to be inside of it. So a knockout design requires two steps in the modify panel. So because we're doing two steps in the modify panel, we want to have two copies of what we're working with. So let's go ahead and set up our design. So when we have our design set up, a couple things you want to look for is you want to make sure Corners of your design are within letters because remember only where the letters are will be where your design is. So you want to make sure like the little feet, the end of the tail, and especially the face of the dog is within the letters. We have that all set. I'm going to hold down Alt, click and drag, and now I made my copy. I'll bring it right below. So once you have set up your design in your text, you cannot resize it again. Okay, so you can't. Do one step, the bottom one, you're, you don't like it, you resize it because they will not line up at the end. So let's go ahead and grab both of these objects. Now the first part of a knockout design is always the same, okay? So the first part is you need to take your letters and crop them to the shape that was on top, okay? So we're basically setting up our dog to only be a dog where the letters are. So I have both of these selected. Let's go over here to crop. And now you can see that only the letters that were on top of the dog are there. Okay, so we just cropped it to the shape of the dog. Now one thing that you will notice right here is that every part of my dog has its, a box around it. So whenever you do a modify like this, it breaks up your shape. For those of you who come to a lot of my webinars, you'll hear this, this explanation a lot. If you take scissors and cut a piece of paper in half, you don't have one paper at the end. Now you have two pieces of paper, okay? So let me go over here and I'm going to do Control Z and do this again. So you want to select both objects. Now remember, when you do a modify, you are modifying an object by another object. So if you only have one object selected, you're not doing a modify because you don't have the other thing that you're modifying it by. So let's grab both of our objects. Let's go to crop. So now we have the shape of the dog that was with the letters. Now I want to immediately treat this as one object. So when you uh, crop it, 
you can see those squares are still around it because it's still selected. So I'm going to right away, right click, make compound path. So now this is one object, it's going to speed up my computer, and we're all set. So because this is a dog, I'm going to go ahead and change this color to black so I can remember what it is, okay? So that's the first part. Always the same, no matter what kind of knockout you do, enhanced, spacing, rhinestone, all those things, that is always the same. So right here, we have to keep in mind that we already have the part of the, the text or the knockout where the dog is. So we need to now take out that space where that dog is going to go. So the two main steps with the knockout design are crop and subtract. Crop and subtract, okay? Crop and subtract, all right? So let's select both of our objects. Let's go right here, select both, and we're going to go over to subtract. So this one may take a second because you're basically breaking this up. So now we have that taken out. And so you can see each one of these has a square around it because they're individual objects. So let's right click, make compound path. So now I'm working with two objects in my work, work space right now. All right. So how are you guys doing? Do you guys get it? Do you need me to repeat anything? Do you need me to clarify anything? Do you feel good about it? Did you fall asleep? Are you shopping? What's happening? <laughs> if you want to do some shopping on the website, I recommend waiting till the end of the webinar. I'm just saying. So I'm going to do it one more time to make sure, okay? So let's go back. So I'm going to do Control-Z, which is undo. Control-Z is your best friend. So if you are working in the software and you haven't started using Control-Z, Definitely make sure you do it. And don't forget, the webinar will be available hopefully by the end of the day, Monday. Okay. So let me select both of these. Remember, modify modifies an object by another one. So you have to have two or more selected. Okay. So here's our first one. Select both. Go to crop. You can see every part of the text that was underneath the object on top is what is remaining. So let's go ahead, right click, make compound path. Because don't forget, when you do a modify, it breaks it apart, okay? So you need to recombine it into one object. Let's go over and change that to black. Step one, crop. So for the first part of it, you're going to crop it, and you're going to recombine it into a compound bath. bath. <laughs> compound path. So you just do crop, make compound path. So let's go over here. Let's select both of these. So now we need to make the space for the for the shape that goes in there. Uh, why do you use compound path and not group? Because basically, Freddie, the reason why is because I know that this is one object. I'm not going to break apart my dog and turn it into different colors. Um, so I combine it into one object. And I had a really good question. Um, why can't we just weld? Um, one thing to note, and Renee, I'm assuming that you use Corel Draw on the Wizard. So Corel Draw on the Wizard, if you weld, it welds it into one object. In Silhouette Studio, welding doesn't do anything if they're not touching. Okay. So if I go right here to weld, so I have it all selected and go to weld, a whole bunch of nothing happened just now. Okay. Because, and I'll right click and weld, none of it is overlapping. So the difference between some software is that welding is like is like combining it, welding it into one object. Silhouette, it's like, nope, welding is only getting rid of overlapping lines. So uh, we're going to right click, make compound path. So making compound path makes it one object, which will speed up everything, and it also will change all the colors together. Um, you can certainly group it if you want to, but for me, because I am always uh, pushing my software to the very limits, um, I need to make sure that everything is combined into the least amount of objects as possible. So that is why I do make compound path. You are more than welcome to do group. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to the second step again. We're going to select both of these. And like I said before, um, you need to make the space that for this dog that you knocked out before. Okay. So if we're going to go right here, let's go right here and let's do subtract. And the reason why we do subtract and subtract all is because we don't need to keep this dog. Okay. Subtract all will help get you to the final step. No problem. But subtract all keeps this top part. So we don't need it. The top parts can be replaced by this dog, right? So we're going to grab both of these. Let's go to subtract. And so now this is going to take this out. 
And so we have that all set. Now I'm just going to right click, make compound path. Um, and Janita, can you do, do it all in Glitter HTV? Yeah, absolutely, no problem. So now, if I bring this up, I can take my little dog, bring him over, and I'm just going to use my arrow keys to adjust it. Now, don't forget, this knockout design is set up to be flush in there. Now, um, I recommend doing a knockout design with some space between it. You would be doing that by doing an offset. That is something that I have covered in my class. So basically, instead of subtracting out the, the dog, you're going to make more space around it by doing offset and subtracting that out. Um, is it better to use block lettering when doing knockouts? Um, good question, Kim. Yes. And the reason why is when you do a knockout design, keep in mind that you can see the dog in the letters. So if you do a really thin font, if you do, you know, a font that tapers, it won't sh it won't be as clear because you're losing out a lot of that canvas area, if that makes sense. So yes, block letters are your best friend with that. Um, when I do knockout designs, I typically will do impact font or I will do um, an athletic font like a high school athletic block font because I they get the best results with it. Um, some people will use differing fonts but it does get a little bit tricky. So if you do choose to use a um, differing font, maybe a thinner font, then you have to compensate by making sure your design isn't super detailed. So if I did a thinner font, this tail and parts of this golden retriever that make it obvious that it's a golden will probably be lost. So I wouldn't recommend it too too much. <laughs> Ton says, I can never remember the subtract and subtract all, so I just keep clicking until I get results. Um, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to tell you, I actually didn't understand the difference at first either. So if you go back to like my first couple webinars, I click it and then I say, whoa, my computer must be freezing up because nothing happened. But in reality, I had clicked subtract all and didn't realize the difference. So um, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, do you guys have any more questions on the modify panel or anything else? Now, don't leave. I can see how many people are in here. And, and if you leave, you're going to miss out on the coupon code, okay? And it's pretty dang good. All right. So any more questions? I, I think I did see a question come in from you, Joe, about the new graph tech. So um, Joe asked, so we just got a new graph tech came out with a new cutter. It's a 20-inch cutter. It's basically a giant cameo. So um, I put it on our Instagram earlier today. I literally just took it out of the box. I was able to kind of work with one a little bit at a trade show. Um, so far, I do enjoy it. I think it's a great cutter if you want to be able to cut a larger area, but you are um, still a little intimidated by the bigger cutters because the new Graph Tech, the CE Lite, 50 uh, loads in the front like the Cameo. It's literally, it looks just like one. So it's nice because it's a little more powerful um, and it does have a 20 inch cutting area. So that means you can cut rolls of Glitter HTV now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, would you do the offset on the first image before you make the second copy? No, you would do the offset on the second one. So the first image where the crop is, is always the same. Whenever you modify a knockout design, it's always the second one that you're subtracting that you're going to be making changes to. I want to put letters on top of a flag. Can I do a knockout that way? Barb, it depends on if you want the flag to be different colors too. Um, the issue you will have with that, Barb, is that if the flag is different colors, then you'll have to remember to group the colors together and then group the whole thing together. So you just, you just have to be precise with your selecting. Can you still use the Silhouette software? Um, so two questions came in about it. It is still a stepper motor. However, it is faster. So I think it's probably like two, two or three times faster. It's a decent amount faster. Um, you, unfortunately, it doesn't take silhouette software. Um, so what I would recommend if you want to get that new graph tech is when you're ready to grow your business, I always recommend upgrading your software first. Your software um, has a lot of things that will help your business uh, like practically. Um, so you have your mock-ups, you have your cost calculator, you have your order forms, all of that. So those are going to help you no matter what cutter you're using. Now once you do that, that is when I recommend upgrading your equipment. So if you were to move, so let's say you're a Cameo user and you're using Silhouette so Studio and your business is growing. I recommend get the Design Wizard next because all of that's going to help you. 
help your business help you grow. And then when you're ready to upgrade again, then upgrade your cutter. So then the graph, the new graph tech's a great option for that because you can just create your designs in the wizard, export it out, and cut it to your graph tech. Now, silhouette and graph tech don't talk, at least not yet. What I would recommend is if you want to keep using your Silhouette Studio software, get the Business Edition upgrade. The Business Edition upgrade allows you to export as an SVG file, and then you can open that into the GraphTech cutting software, no problem. Um, is it Mac compatible? Um, the GraphTech itself is Mac compatible, and those programs are. The Design Wizard is not because it has to work in CorelDRAW, which is Windows only. So yes and no. What's the heart icon below the modified icon? Look at you, Barry, trying to get more information. I'm just teasing. This right here, this is a feature that I never use. It's pop-up. It's for card makers. You can make pop-up cards. Um, Tom, do you think so? What will do a larger cutter in due time? I don't know. Uh, it's hard to tell. They, uh, they announced new machines in the summer so maybe but if I had to guess I would probably say no not for now because they are they're making a lot of really good money on the cameo now like coming from their point of view I don't think there's a real need for it for them but hey you win some you lose some are they ever going to figure out how to make the Bluetooth work? Uh, actually, Jennifer, so uh, I'm in Silhouette's beta program, so I, I can test out the software beforehand. Um, the newer versions of the beta, the, the Bluetooth has actually been working pretty well. They've been working pretty extensively the past couple months to improve that. So I am cautiously optimistic that it will work well in the next couple of months. Now, if you guys have been following my videos and my webinars, I have been advising people to not use it for a long time. So um, I am probably the person who will adopt to it, one of the last people to adopt to it because I've had so many issues with it. Okay, so do you guys have any more questions on the modify panel or the trade shows coming up or anything like that?